Like many, I think the Frogman is the most collectible Master of G G-Shock watch, making this new GWF A1000 model highly anticipated among fans. Apart from it being a new Frogman, it's also the first analog model, with all the previous versions being digital. So is it a must buy? Let's find out. If you've worn a GWF D1000 before, you'll notice a lot of differences between it and the new A1000. For a start, it's much lighter at 119 grams compared to the 146 grams of the D1000. But although the case is slightly shorter in length, the A1000 is nearly two millimeters deeper at 19.7 millimeters. I mean, every Frogman has been massive, and this is no exception but the lighter weight does make it easier to wear for longer periods of time. The strap is ever so slightly shorter too, so you don't get that overhang quite so much, but it's still pretty long. Casio has adopted its carbon monocoque construction here, while retaining the ISO 200 meter water resistant credentials needed to make this a fully fledged dive watch. The carbon monocoque is stronger and lighter than the older resin bodies. And among other things, it means that the button guards can be removed, making the buttons easier to press and giving the watch a sleeker, cleaner look. While the case and the case back are now one, you'll still find the familiar frog icon on the back. faces it's very special. Not only is it supremely legible, but it has some excellent loom to make it stand out in the dark as well. The hour and minute hands are joined by a second hand, there's a subdial for the world time, and another subdial for the days of the week and, and the tide. It's an anti-reflective sapphire crystal over the dial, and it's, it's very subtly domed, giving it extra depth when viewed from an angle. It's really good looking. On the subject of depth, there's no depth gauge on the A1000. This may put serious divers off, but by not including it here, I think Casio's making it clear who the watch is for. As I've already mentioned, the Frogman is highly collectible and it's almost certainly worn by people who will probably never go diving. The less challenging looks, the reduced weight, the more watch-like analog face, and the lack of a depth gauge are all moves to make the watch more mainstream, without losing the classic Frogman look. I mean, I still wouldn't be surprised to see the digital Frogman continue in some form, making a readable depth gauge easier to implement and giving serious divers another Frogman watch to consider. What you do get is a Bluetooth connection, another first for the Frogman. Linking with the app is very easy. You just press and hold the start button for a couple of seconds. The app not only makes it easy to set the world time and the alarms, but it also provides a great guide for the multiple functions, making the app worth using regardless. It shows exactly how to set the dive mode. For example, you hold down the eight o'clock button for a few seconds, it beeps and the hands align at 12 o'clock. And all the individual features after that, including how to register a dive point and enable the tide graph, it's all there clearly laid out, making the watch much easier to use than reading a manual. I think the Bluetooth connection is a considerable benefit and as a casual wearer of Frogman watches, I'll take it over a depth gauge every day. What else do I like? I like that when you press this button, the hands move out of the way of the subdials so you can see them properly. I like the big knurled screw down crown. I like the solar charging. And I, I really love the design. It's still so obviously a G-Shock Frogman 
but with the right design concessions made so that it just becomes more wearable. I miss a carbon fibre strap though. This is fluoroelastomer, which is very strong, but it doesn't feel or look quite so premium as the D1000 strap. And it is pretty stiff right from the start. I feel similarly about the Keeper too and prefer the metal one from the D1000, even though it does tend to catch wrist hairs. At 57 millimeters, the case is an absolute monster, especially on my six and a half inch wrist. And that additional depth makes it impossible to wear under a shirt sleeve. Not that you really want to. I mean, this is a summer watch. It's designed to be shown off. So do you want a GF, GWF A1000 Frogman? Well, it's available right now and it's £699 or $800. The Frogman is one of my favourite G-Shocks and this one takes the look of the watch I like and makes it easier to wear, it adds Bluetooth for convenience and you get this more mature looking analogue watch face. I mean, I'm going to be happy to add this to my collection and I think you will be too.